Hi. We're looking at quadratic equations still, we're looking at factoring it, and in this case we've got a special one where this first term is not equal to 1. That a term. Remember, it's ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, the a term is not equal to 1, so our trick we've been using has to have a little bit of a revision. Remember, before we were looking for a number that multiplied to equal this, added to equal this, when a is not equal to 1, when the term in front of my x squared is not just 1, you have to add a little wrinkle. Okay, well, we'll see what I mean. What do we got? 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 all equals 0. Now, I said there's a new wrinkle. It's still very, very similar. I still have to find two numbers that are going to give me minus 11. In fact, already over here this time. Mix things up. So what do numbers add to give me minus 11? But it's no longer what also multiplied to give me 6. I actually have to multiply these two numbers. What two numbers will give me, will multiply to give me 3 times 6 or 18? What two numbers will multiply to give me 18? That's the big extra wrinkle. And we're going to see the solution also has a few extra little steps thrown in, some things we're going to refer to from previous videos, but that's the idea. What numbers add to give us minus 11 and multiply to give us 18? In this case, that's positive, this is positive, so it's positive 18. Okay, so what numbers, remember we don't want to focus on the plus because unlimited options, but what two numbers will multiply to give us 18? Well, as always, it's always easiest to start with 1 and 18 because of course that's going to work. Very ugly 1. 1 and 18. Well, 2 and 9. Of course, 3 and 6. That's what got us here in the first place. And, well, 4, nope, 5, nope, 6 and 3 is the same as 3 and 6. So, hey, we've got some combinations right here. Okay. But now let's see which of these could add to give us minus 11. And remember, 1 might be a minus. In this case, always go back to the problem. We end up with a plus here. And don't let that confuse you thinking it's plus or minus. I'm just doing that to emphasize. And now trying to wipe it away with my fingers. So, what two numbers? Ah, we need a plus. We need a plus 18. So, if we want a plus, either both numbers have to be positive or both numbers have to be negative. A plus and a minus would give us a minus, which wouldn't work out. So, either these have to both be plus, which wouldn't make sense because two plus numbers can't make a negative. So, we need two numbers that really are going to be a negative. Minus 1 and minus 18 gives minus 19. No. Minus 2, minus 9. Wait. Minus 2, minus 9 equals minus 11. Perfect. We're in business. That must be the case where both of these are minus. So, last time we just wrote out the solution. We can't do that. We can't jump. What we do is an actual weird seeming trick. We're going to take this number and split it. So, I'm going to switch colors, like I like to do when things are a little more complicated. So, rather than thinking of this as minus 11x, I can think of this as minus 2x and minus 9x. And just think about it, well, I combine these back up, I always get back to minus 11, so all I did was split it, and bear with me, you're going to see there's a reason. Again, a method to my madness. But this, plus 6 is still here, still all equal to 0, and this 3x squared is also equal, still there. So why did we do this? Well, we looked at a problem before where we actually did common factoring. That's what the trick is now. When a is not equal to zero, you split it, and now you look at common factoring of the first two and common factoring of the second two. So let's see what I mean. What do these two have in common? x. I can divide both by an x. So let's bring that x out just like I did. 3x because I divide that by x. Same with this, we'd we'll be left with a 2, because I divide that by x. What can I factor out from this? Well, if you look, the only real thing I can do is a 3. In this case, I can actually make minus 3, since it's a minus in front. So, remember, it's as if I'm dividing by minus 3 in this case. Minus 9x divided by minus 3 would just be 3x. 6 divided by minus 3, minus 2. The signs change when you're dividing by a negative. That's why this became a positive, this became a negative. And all of a sudden, we have two things that are the same. 3x minus 2, 3x minus 2. And we looked at that previous case where this happened, and we replaced this with a z. 
fact, it might have even been the same numbers for Lucas me. <laughs> but whatever. You can replace this with Z or think, look, I now have two things in common. I can factor this out. If you're not feeling comfortable, go back and check that video out where we made that substitution. I mean, it will help you visualize it the first few times, but I can factor this out. This is the same exact thing here and here. I can factor that out. Factor out this entire bracketed term. And just like before, that leaves me x minus 3. All equal to 0. So I've now finished factoring this thing out. Well, as before, if I want to solve for x, I set that in. I go, well, this bracket must be equal to 0. Okay, well, plus 2 to both sides. We've got a lot of experience doing this by now. Ooh, i got to get x on its own. It's multiplied by 3, so divide by 3 on both sides. So x must be 2 over 3. There's one of our solutions. As always, if I want to, I could plug that in and check. But my other solution, x minus 3 equals 0, plus 3 to both sides. Or x equals 3. My other solution. So this was a more complicated case. When a is not equal to 0, this is the best way to go. And it's worth noting, if I switch the order, I arbitrarily put the 2x in front of the 9x. If I put the 9x here and the 2x there, when I factored it out, I would have gotten this instead in the brackets. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the order. I guessed, I, well, didn't even guess. I just arbitrarily did it, and it would have still worked out if I'd switched them. So this is how you do these types, and I'll show you another example in a minute. So thank you.